Okay, let's look at number two. Okay, um, I have Vayhi Erev. Um, we've learned uh, Vayhi is a form of Haya. What does Haya mean? Yeah, yeah, Haya is to be. So this is a WCI form, so it's clearly passed. And uh, what's Erev mean? Evening, and we have the same thing, Vaihi Boker, which is a new vocab word, morning. So, evening was, and morning was, okay, and then Yom Shilishi. What's uh, Yom? Day, Shilishi, third, okay, so third. Day, day third, third day. Notice, this is an ordinal number. It therefore follows the noun and agrees with the noun in gender number definiteness. These are masculine, singular, and no article. Okay? Now, in English, we tend to want to put an article on this, but just realize in, in Hebrew there isn't. If you wanted to translate it without the article, it would be a third day. Okay? So there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. Okay? Let's look at number nine. Oh, that's a large number, isn't it? Okay, I think we got it all up here. Let's, uh, let's, let's do this. Um, let, me, uh, let me read this out loud here. I have a va yil kaduha. Va yil kaduha. You see this va with a doubling dot in the yod prefix, clearly a vayiktol or WCI, which is pass. So somebody did something here. Lakad means to what? To capture. Now, what I have here is a prefix yod, and I have a shurik here. That shurik actually stands for a, excuse me, a kibbutz here. That kibbutz stands for a shurik. It's defectively spelled, okay? So this is a uh, 3MP form. They did something. What did they do? They captured, and then I have a direct object pronoun suffix, which is what gender, number, and uh, person? Ha is, yep, 3FS. So they captured her, or it could also be an it. Remember, Nouns could be masculine or feminine, but not neuter in Hebrew. So if we have an it, it still has to be grammatically masculine or feminine. So either they captured her or captured it. Okay. Um, and then we have mekze shalosh shanim. What is kitze? We just learned this. this. is a new vocab word. It's end or extremity. Good. And I have a mem prefix, which is actually the word men, okay, prefix to katse. So it's from the end, and it's from the end of. Segel hey nouns become sere hey when they're in the construct. So this is a construct chain. From the end of shalosh shanim. Shalosh is what number? Three. Shanim is the word shana in the plural. Now, you would expect shanot, but, but it, it takes im frequently for its, mass, for its feminine plural form. So it's uh, years. So how would I tr make this good English? They captured it from the end of three years. Yeah, you would, you would want to translate this as at, at the end. Okay? At the end of three years. Now, I have bishnat sheish. What's the noun here, shanat? It's its year, okay? Is it in the absolute or the construct? Yeah, you see that at ending. So the absolute is shana in the singular, 
shana, and a becomes at here in the construct. So this is the construct form of year. In, in year of, shesh. What number is that? Six. Okay, good. So it's in the year of six. Now again, in English, how would we translate that? Yeah, in, in year six or in the sixth year. Okay? But notice that in Hebrew, it's using a construct chain to do it. In the year of six. Uh, in the year of six, to who? To which king? Lechizkiyahu. I'm sorry, Lechizkiyah. Which king is Hezekiah? Hezekiah. Okay, so we would say something like, in year six of Hezekiah, or in the sixth year of Hezekiah. Okay. Now, I have a, a pronoun he, which uh, is the independent pronoun. So it's either she or it. And then shanat tesha. Um, what am I missing here? I'm missing a copula. I need to add one. Uh, it is shanat tesha. It is the same shanat as we had over here. The construct of shana, the year of tesha. What's tesha? It's nine. So, what what we're being given is a um, a way of marking time or situating the year six of Hezekiah with another year of another king they know. Okay, so it is the year of nine, Le Hoshea. The year nine of whom? Of Hosea or Hoshea, Melech Yisrael, the king of Israel. Okay, so remember, Hezekiah was a southern king, and Hoshea was a northern king. And so we're dating Hezekiah's reign in light of Hoshea's reign. Okay? So, they captured it. They captured it when? At the end of Shaloshanim, at the end of three years. In the year of six to Hezekiah, meaning in Hezekiah's sixth year. By the way, when is that? Uh, it is the year of nine to Hoshea, the king of Israel. It is Hoshea's ninth year. Okay? There you go. That was exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, what other ones? Number seven. Well, we're bouncing back and forth like a ping pong table here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, apparently they, they didn't have such a large number. Uh, so they, they had to, you know, do, do things like this. Do we, do we want to work through the whole thing or, or what? <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Yeah, no problem. All right. So, so we have Vayizbach, right? That's number seven, Vayizbach. Uh, what is that? It's a WCI form. Uh, who who did the zavaching here? So it's he. It's three ms. Notice the prefix yod, but no ending. So that's three ms for sure, right? So he zavacht, and zavach means to to sacrifice. That's right. So he sacrificed at zavach. What did he sacrifice? He sacrificed the sacrifice, okay? Now, um, Asher Zavach La'aronai. So what he's doing, he's omitted words, but he sacrificed the sacrifice which he sacrificed to Adonai, <laughs> okay? Now, that does make it really tough, but... 
but uh, that's that's the idea. He's just trying to move you further along to get to the numbers here. So he sacrificed the sacrifice, which he sacrificed to, to Adonai, uh, and then he uh, lays out what those sacrifices amounted to. Bakar Esrim, Ushanayim Aleph. What's Bakar mean? Cattle. Okay, good. So, cattle. What's Esrim? Okay, this is 20. This is a form of Eser made plural. Eser is singular, when it, and it means 10. Make it plural, and 10 becomes 20. So there's 20. Ushanayim. And think Shania Twain. Shaniam is 2, right? Shaniam and Shtayim. Uh, what, by the way, what form of 2 is this? Is Because... Uh, this 20 and 2 equals 22. Um, the unit number is 2. Is that an agreement or a disagreement number for gender? How's it go? 1 through 2 agree, right? 3 through 10 disagree. So this is an agreement number. So... Aleph is what gender? Which is a set of a thousand. Okay. What, what gender is Aleph? It's masculine. There's zero ending here, right? And so, what gender of the number two do I need? If it's going to agree, I need a masculine form. And is Shania masculine? It is. Because the one with the Tav, Shtayim, is feminine. Okay. So this is masculine. So we have agreement here. So it's 22 sets of Aleph. 22 sets of 1,000 is what? 22,000. Okay? So that's how much cattle, big, big animals. And then for Tzon, which is flock, that is small animals, sheep and goats, how many of those? I have me'ah v'esrim aleph. What's that? Me'ah is? It's a hundred. Okay, and then esrim is? It's twenty. It's esrim over here the same, right? It's a pluralized form of ten, which makes it twenty. So me'ah v'esrim equals a hundred and twenty. And we have 120 sets of what? 120 sets of 1,000. So what does that equal? 120,000. Yes. <laughs> Let's look at number 10. All right. So, Vahi Makates. We've uh, already seen Mekates, right, or Mikze, same, same idea. Uh, something happened. There's a WCI form. At the end of Shiloshim Shana. Now, what's embedded in Shiloshim, the number three? Is it singular or plural over here, though? It's plural. So is it the number three anymore? No, it's a multiple of three times, uh, times 10, right? So it's uh, 30. So at the end of 30 shana, 30 what? Okay, so 30 years. And then I have the arba me'ot shana. What is arba? It's four. And what am I counting? Four what's? Four me'ot, four feminine plural sets of me'ah, okay? What is a set of me'ah? That's a hundred, but it's made plural. So it's four sets of a hundred. What's that number? It's 400. And then shana again, years. So at the end of 30 years and 400 years, so how many years is that? 
Yeah, so altogether it equals 430 when I add these two together, okay? So if I wanted to really simplify this, I could say at the end of 430 years. But sometimes the numbers will be split up. It's just like, you know, Abraham Lincoln did this. Four score and, right, seven years ago. So, um, so at the end of 430 years, Yatsu kol tzivot Adonai. What's Yatsu? Yatsaf is to to go out. Remember Yatsi, right? To go out. So uh, someone went out. Got three root letters with a shurik at the end. That looks like a cow perfect 3CP of Yatsa. So they went out. Who's the they? Uh, this is probably the subject. It's right after the verb. All the tzivot Adonai. What's, what are the tzivot Adonai? Remember this word? This is the word for host. Remember the word for host, Sava? The host or army? Okay, it's plural. So all the hosts of Adonai went out from where? Me Eretz Mitzrayim. From Eretz Mitzrayim? What's Eretz Mitzrayim? The land of Egypt. Egypt. Mm-hmm. So... Here, here it's making reference to the, the hosts are, are, are the, the people of Israel. They went out from the land of Egypt. We good there? Yep, you're welcome. Any other ones? Which one? Okay, so for number four, we have V'ar, I'm sorry, V'avram. Uh, who's that? Abram. Ben is what word? Son. And um, notice it's lost its stress here and it's bound to the next word. Son of Chamesh Shanim. What is Chamesh for a number? That's five. Shanim. What's that word? Years. That's years. Very good. So we're dealing with five years. V and Shivim Shana. What is embedded in this word? Well, the number Sheva, which is seven. But notice it's pluralized, masculine plural, Shiv'im. So which number is this? It's not seven anymore. It's 70. Shana, years. Okay? Joined by and. So Abram, son of Chameshanim, five years, and Shiv'im Shana, and 70 years. What does that mean? Abram... I'm missing a verb, right? There's no verb here. I need to add a copula. Was. was. Abram was a son of 75 years. What does it mean to be a son of 75 years? It's to be that many years old. Exactly. So this is a Hebrew expression for being X years old. To be a son of X years. All right. What's that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. This is a disjunctive vav, and so it is. It's probably giving parenthetical information in, in, the, in the context of the, the narrative. That's right. Any other ones? Let's look at number five there. Uh, so... We have yesh lo, right? Number five, yesh lo. 
Uh, is this the word not, or is this the pronoun, uh, the Lamed preposition with a pronominal suffix? Ah, how do we spell the negator lo? Like that. That's not. The lo here is the Lamed preposition plus a 3ms pronominal suffix. Okay? So when you take yesh, which means there is or there are, or there was or were, this is yesh lo, there was to him these things, which means he had these things. Right? Remember yesh and ain? What's that? I said you could stop there. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, no worries. So you got tied up in the knots, huh? <laughs> All right. So let, let, let us go ahead and review the numbers. Shiva is what number? Seven. And what am I numbering? I'm numbering Banim, which is what gender? Masculine. Does seven have to agree or disagree with the gender of the noun at numbers? It disagrees because it's between three and ten. So notice Shiva is feminine here, isn't it? Got my comments a ending. And then I have Vishalosh Banot. What's Shalosh? That's three. Banot is daughters. Is that masculine or feminine? Feminine. And is three uh, an agreement or a disagreement number? It disagrees. So I need a masculine form of shalosh. Is that masculine? Yep. I have no ending, which is the zero ending form. That's masculine. Okay. So, uh, so yep. So I have, I have confusion everywhere. <laughs> All right. So there was to him seven sons and three daughters. Or he had seven sons and three daughters. Okay. Anything else here? Well, here, if I didn't have you do uh, 11, let's do that together for fun, okay? And actually, just we'll, we'll just do the numbers. Um... It's, uh, it's, this part is where the numbers begin. So I have sheish, meot, elef, u, shaloshet, alafim, vachamesh, meot, vachamishim. All right? So what are we looking at here with the number sheish? Okay, good. So this is the number six. Excellent. And uh, meot is 100. How many sets of 100 are we talking about? Yeah, apparently six sets of 100, right? Notice 100 is feminine, and if I'm counting six sets of 100, which are feminine, I need to use the masculine form because six is a gender disagreement number. Okay? So I have 600... And I have 600 what? I have 600 elephs. Okay? So I have 600 sets of 1,000. So how many is that? 600,000. Okay? And then I have Ushaloshit uh, Alafim. What is Shaloshit? It's three. And what am I numbering? I'm numbering alafim, which is masculine plural, sets of a thousand. Is three going to agree or disagree with thousand? If it's disagree. three, it's disagreeing, so it's going to be feminine. Notice I do have a feminine form of three here, right? So three sets of a thousand is three thousand. Over here I had um, six hundred thousand. All right. 
And then I have v'chamesh me'ot. What's chamesh? Five. How many, uh, five of what? Sets of me'ah, which is sets of a hundred. This is feminine. Five is going to number the feminine noun. Five sets of a hundred. So it's a disagreement now, and it's going to be masculine. And notice I'm using the zero ending form chamesh. So that's 500. Okay. And then I have uh, va chamishim. What's that? That's chamesh with the plural ending. What's chamesh again? Five. Make five plural, and I've got 50. All right. So what in the world am I looking at here when I add it all together? 600,000. 3,550. So write it all together. 603,550. Okay? Uh, this is a lot easier, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. So praise God for Arabic numerals. All right. There you go.